Welcome, everybody. Welcome. It's, I forgot what day it is. It's Thursday, six o'clock UK time, which means it's webinar time. And uh, today I'm going to be presenting why can't all my clients be nice? So I'm Jeff Newnham. And when I first decided to do this, it was because the industries I'm closely associated with, farriery, which I am a farrier, and we work very closely with veterinary surgeons, some of the biggest challenges we have is not necessarily dealing with the animals, but dealing with their owners. And sometimes you enter into a situation that can be quite stressful if you've got a lame animal, and to be able to have good communication very, very smoothly, very effectively and very fast is really, really vital. So sometimes it gets a bit difficult and we, we, we often find ourselves saying, why can't all my clients be nice? And sometimes the subtext of that is, why can't they all be nice just like me? And the fact of the matter is that they can't all be like me because we're all different. And part of the challenge is identifying how to speak to certain people. And most people fall into different categories or personality types. And today I'm going to be talking about using this system called DISC. And I first saw this about 20 years ago or so by a guy called Dr. Robert Rome. And I was in the audience, like many other people were, and he said something about, you've got to learn to say the same thing differently. And it really struck a chord with me, partly because the example he used was dealing with his very tricky daughter. Now, I'm not saying my daughter was tricky, um, uh, far be it, because she may well see this, so I can't possibly say that. But I had three children, I still have three children, and they're all different. And so what I found I was doing is saying to them at dinner time, dinner's ready, it's on the table, and nothing would happen. So after listening to Robert Rome, I thought, right, I've got to say the same thing differently and address each of their personality types. So to my daughter, I say, I can't use that name, can I? I, I say, daughter number one, I've only got one daughter, but daughter number one, you have no idea what I've cooked tonight, you are gonna love it. And she would run down quite excited about the thought of whatever it was I'd cooked. Uh, to my one of my sons, I'd say, dinner's ready, where do you want to sit? And he'd say, I want to sit here. I said, that's great. My other son, I'd say, dinner's ready, could you lay the table for me? And he'd get nice and forks out. And suddenly, I had three children around a dining table, whereas historically, I'd be shouting and shouting, and nothing would happen. So I thought, there's something in this. So I then tried to use, not try to use it, but I used it and adopted it in my business. So when I met and greeted clients for the first time, I would try and assess how they might like to be spoken to. And it's rather like if you and I were going to play football, I know what my natural tendency to, cook, to kick a ball is like, is to do it really, really high. But I know that you like to receive the ball very, very low on the ground. So I need to adapt and adopt a new style of play in order for you to receive the ball in a way that you can do something with it. OK, so that's the premise of this whole um, hour. I think it, we'll probably run through in about an hour. We're going to stop uh, just before the end. That's an, that seems an odd thing to say, but we're going to stop before the end. <laughs> um, and then we're going to gather up any, com any comments and then we'll address those in about five minutes uh, at the end. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through about 45 minutes. We'll, we'll break for a little coffee break. We'll look through the comments and then we'll come back and then we'll go through the comments for another five or ten minutes, okay? So I hope that's okay with everyone. So let's get going. <clears throat> First of all, some legals. Uh, Dr. Robert Rome and uh, DISC and the Insights people have suggested it, it, it's, it's fine to use his material. So I, I've nicked some of his pictures and they're, they're great pictures. Couldn't have done them better, so I use his. Um, so that's all okay. Um, and one of the things he said is, is that about people, and, and this is what I, I use for my clients, is that by the fruit you'll know them, uh, but by their roots, you'll understand them, okay? Now, when we're dealing with horses, as people in the veterinary and uh, farry world uh, are on a daily basis, we often use a thing called a horse grimace scale. So this is um, looking at horses. I'm sorry that you, you may not see the full picture here, but it's <clears throat> looking at horses and seeing how their, their nostrils are, their eyes or their ears, and seeing what sort of grimace they're pulling. And from that, you can get an idea of their amount of discomfort. So that's great. That's really great with horses. And it's really fast because you can look down a, a row of horses and say, wow, these are nice horses. And you think, gosh, except for that one. That, that, that one looks a bit odd. OK, really easy with horses. 
but it's not so easy with clients, okay? Partly because they can't move their ears backwards and forwards. Okay, so this is the interactive bit now. So I, I warned you, I warned you, get some pen and paper handy. This is it now. So I want you to list three clients that are important to your business, okay? So it's, it's not a test, and these are just your bits of paper, so you can do it or not do it, but I'm just gonna allow a tiny bit of time for you to just jot down now three clients that are important to your business, okay? Good, you should have done that by now. Right, great. So in your own words, write down a really brief description um, of each of their per personality traits. So, and that can be just odd, odd words that you associate with those clients, okay? So do that. And then, so for those three clients, and then lastly, number four client, number four client now, one that you have real difficulty with. Okay, and we'll come back to that at the end. Okay, so right now, write down those three clients, what you, what you think their sort of basic personalities are, but number four client, the name of, you know, that client that you have challenges with, okay? Give you a couple of seconds. Right, you've got that done. Good. Right, now, when you um, are using a fast system, and that's why I love this system, because it's really fast. First of all, when we jump out of our car or a van and we arrive at a new client, um, we, you've got just a few seconds to really sum them up. So the first thing we do is we say, are they outward going or are they reserved? Okay, and this is like their, their internal motor. And that's quite easy to do. If somebody comes running out their house towards you, they say, oh, hello. Uh, you think, yeah, pretty outward going. If they come out slowly um, or reluctantly in some cases, probably reserved, okay? So draw a circle, put a horizontal line across it. And we say people at the top of that circle are outward going. People below that, we're just gonna say reserved, okay? Now we're gonna take that same circle, put a vertical line through it. And we say people on the left are task orientated and people on the right are people orientated, okay? So now, if you wanna draw those circles on your bit of paper, okay? Give you a couple of seconds just to jot, jot that down, okay? So now we've got four behavioral tendencies that is, that is gonna help us to characterize people. We've got outward going, we've got reserved, we've got task, and we've got people orientated, okay? So now we've got those four quadrants, we say, Top left would be task orientated, outward going. We've got top right, which are outward going, people orientated. We've got bottom right, which is reserved, people orientated. And we've got bottom left, which is reserved, task orientated. Okay, so we've got four quadrants. So now it's down to you again. <laughs> okay, so get your bit of paper out and your pen, put down your name. Okay, if there's only you in the room or there's several of you doing it, don't mix the papers up. Okay, and would you say, and just in general terms, this isn't casting rock forever in a day, but just for now, just for the purposes of this little, um, little, this little soiree, okay, just put down your name and whether you would say in general you're more outgoing or reserved, just tick one of those. And then would you say in general you're more task orientated or people orientated, okay? Have a little think, don't spend too long on it, just tick it, okay? Okay, and now refer back to that list of three clients we started with, those are three, not the, not the one you've got difficulty with, just those three, and then go through that same process. Would you say client number one is more outward going or reserved, more task orientated or more people orientated? And do that for those three clients, okay? I'll, I'll give you just a moment to uh, do that, okay? So we're going to say that that top left hand, we're going to call Ds, they're very dominant. They're very, uh, they're real doers, they're driving people, they really move things forward, okay? We call those Ds. Uh, when we look at the top right, the outward going people orientated, they're very inspiring, they're very interactive, they probably all live in Hollywood because they're all talking their hands like this, okay? And then we've got the reserved people orientated on the bottom right that are really sweet, very supportive um, and do anything for you. Really easy people to deal with. And then we've got the bottom left, which are task orientated, reserved. They're very cautious. They're very competent and they're very careful. They don't like taking risks. Okay. 
So you've got a lot of people from the sciences in there, okay, very cautious, data driven, okay, those dominant people, they're the, the, the movers and shakers, the eyes, very inspirational, very creative people, uh, very bad at timekeeping, um, we we'll come on to that in, a, in, in just a moment, and then we've got those bottom right people, the supportive people, that are, are really good people to work with, okay, because they, they're very, very supportive. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to have a good look now at the Ds. So the Ds are dominant and they make things happen, okay? So would you say that's a, a D-type person that would make things happen? Just get it done. It's not bogged down by details, just do it, okay? Like a Thatcher, you know, get it done, okay? Another guy, get it done. And I think a really good example of this would be if you're working in a kitchen, Okay, he'd be telling you exactly what he wants from you. You you'll know exactly what he expects from you. Okay, so the words to describe the D's would be dominant, direct, demanding, and they're doers. Okay, their mindset is get it done, make it happen, win results. And a lot of if if you're in uh, the farrowy industry or the veterinary industry, you might find that these people are among some of your um, competition clients, clients that compete with their horses at a good level quite a high level because they want to win okay that's a really important thing they want to win so a lot of your um competition clients they will be d's pretty difficult to deal with because they want to win okay they like being in charge they like challenges they like achieving they like activities okay they are however very hard to please okay they're very industrious they're very goal oriented they are busy people they're motivated by challenges and they're very motivated, motivated by control and choices. Give them choice. Their environmental needs, they need freedom. Okay, don't lock them in. Um, they need authority and they need to be able to advance themselves. And I think those um, few people that I've just shown you, um, you know, you say that that fits them to, to a T. Their communication style, very, very straightforward, very blunt. You can sometimes say they're a, they can be a bit bullyish, okay? but they are very blunt, very straightforward. Their blind spots are that they lack sensitivity and they certainly lack patience, okay? So that's the Ds. So I'm not saying they're good or bad people, I'm just saying these are their personality traits, okay? So you can spot them and identify them and you can deal with them appropriately and we'll come on to that just later. But we're gonna run through these personality traits first, okay? So just to remind ourselves, we're gonna go on to the top right, the eyes, the inspiring people, okay? And they make life fun. It's just being around uh, people that are high eyes. They're just the, the best fun people to be, a, be around. Okay. They forget every party. Okay. Because they're terrible timekeepers. And these are the people that when you arrive at the appointment at, at your time, you said you'd be there at 10 and you're there at 10. They open the door and the first thing they say is, oh, was it today? And they had no idea it was today. And they, they just turned the horses out. And you think, Every time, every time it's like this. If you don't want us, just say it. But what you've got to realise, it's not about you. That's just who they are, okay? And they'll go and get the horses in and they'll be muddy. And you know what? By the time you finish the appointment, you've forgiven them because they're so much fun to be around. So they've just been late for the appointment. They've just got the horses in. You just settle them down. You get working. And then somebody will call, call them. And they say, oh, I've got to go. I forgot. I've, I've got to be at a coffee. I'm meeting my friend for coffee. I'm, I'm, I've got to go now. And you're halfway through doing it. You think, what on earth is going on? It's not about you. That's just how those people are. Okay, you've got to learn to deal with them. Okay, so these are some of these, these people. Okay, these, these would be I people. Okay, great fun to be around. Very inspiring. It's a great guy, Gunnar Gatsky. So they are inspiring. They're interested in people. Okay, they want to be the star of the show, and these people will bring out all the rosettes that they've just won since your last appointment, just to show you what they've been winning. Okay, they like people, they like prestige, um, and they like short-term projects. Okay, so if you've got somebody working with you, um, you know, on your team, remember short-term projects. Okay, they won't do long-term things, short-term, and they want to be on the go, and they are talkative, they're fun, um, they exaggerate like mad. Um, and they're great starters, not very good finishers, but they're full of enthusiasm to just get things started, okay? They're motivated by recognition, 
popularity, approval, and awards. Okay, that's why they all live in Hollywood. Okay, now the environmental, me uh, environmental needs are they need the opportunity to, in to inspire and they need friendship. Okay, now my daughter, to punish her, I just take her phone away and she'd be pleading me, Oh, can I please have my phone back? Please, just for you know, no, and that was her punishment. Okay, take away their friendship from and their way of communicating with, it, with all her friends. It was, it was terrible for her. Best punishment ever for those people. Okay. My other son, you say, you keep your phone. When I get older, I'm going to buy my own. And then you'll have to ask me to use it. Okay. But different people. So we're just looking at the eyes at the moment. Their communication style is friendly and informal. Okay. So remember that if you're dealing with them on the yard, in front of their horse, whatever, friendly, informal. Their blind spots are, as I said, it's time management. They won't listen to you. Okay. And they won't complete the task. So you get the horses half in and forget because they're going to coffee. Okay, that's the eyes. Okay, I'm just pressing my button here. Okay, so let's remember where, where we are. We're going to now look at the bottom right hand corner, the supportive people. Okay, so these are, and it's absolutely true in this, in this picture here, these are the unsung heroes. Okay, because they're very supportive. And, and sometimes you need a team to, to make projects move forward. And these are the people that can help that. Okay, so these are some typical supportive type people. Okay. Now, they're steady, they're sweet, it needs to be stable. Okay, They don't like any um, rough waters, they just need things calm. Okay, Their mindset is, let's all just get along. Okay, No conflict. Okay, They like peace and harmony and teamwork. So if you're building a team, you may want to include some, some supportive S-types in there, building a team. They're motivated by security. Okay, they need to be appreciated, okay, and they want to be assured that you know they're valued. Okay, now that's um, their we could look now really at their environmental needs. You've got to give them an area of specialization, and that can okay, that's to give them some stability. So they need a designated task or a job. So when you go to a client, okay, and they're an S type, you say. Could you get the horse out, please? Or could we sweep this back? Could we make this error? So you give them a designated job to do, and they're quite happy to do it. Okay, really, really sweet people. Very easy to get on with. Okay, and their, communi their communication style is they're very open and they're very sincere. They're very calm, very sincere. Okay, their blind spots is they can't deal with change and they can't say no. So if you find yourself um, working with an S-type or you are an S-type, the other thing I could say, and this might sound very harsh, you could say you're sometimes a bit of a sucker, okay, because you can't say no, okay. So, you, so you've got to feel it's okay to say no, okay. And, and I'm not saying it in a derogatory way, but you're so eager to please that people might take you for a ride. So remember, it's okay to say no, okay. So we switch around now to the bottom left. We look at those cautious people, those C-type personalities. But when you go to their um, yard, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, that they, they think things through, okay? They think things through, and I remember that. Because when you go to their yard, they're going to be looking at details. So there's, there's Mr. Bay with his train set, okay? Um, I don't know if you know uh, uh, Lindsay Field in uh, New Zealand doing some great work on, um, on feet and cutting them open and photographing them, documenting, uh, you know, uh, different complaints, um, uh, touring, uh, building that. And this guy, you may not know, uh, Sully. You know, this is a guy you want if you want to land on the Hudson. OK, this was the pilot. OK, so you want somebody who's very clear, who's calculating its de details, fast mind, accurate, all that sort of thing. That's the guy I want, you know, flying my plane. I don't want someone like me flying it, but I think, oh, my God, I'm going to die. OK, this is the sort of guy that you want. OK, and if you're in court, that's the sort of lady that you want. OK, something that's very direct on it. OK, now. The thing about the C-types, and uh, we had a, a great experience just recently, new client, uh, we just pulled up, person came out of the house and just said, can you move your van? Well, no, she didn't say, can you? She just said, move your van. It's a new client, within 30 seconds, move your van. And we parked where we thought was appropriate, and all she was doing was giving us data. She wasn't concerned with our feelings. You know, did she come across her? The data was, your van needs moved because she had to actually get out possibly before we had finished the work. 
She didn't tell us that. She just said, move your van. Now, had we not have been aware of different personalities, we were, as far as I think, pretty all of us, we would have got pretty offended. But uh, me and Chris, we looked at each other and said, cautious C-type. That's what we said, cautious C-type. And we knew that it, was, it wasn't about us. That's just her style of being. That's just her personality. So the words to describe them, they are cautious, calculating, careful. Okay, their mindset is, let's do this right. What's the plan? And when you go to one of these clients, before, you, before they let you touch their horse, they will bring out the latest MRI, the latest x-rays, the latest reports. They won't even let you pat the horse until you've read everything. And also they've just uh, downloaded the stuff from Google that you need to really look through first. OK, and you've got a wad and you think, you know, I'm not going to live long enough to get through all this information before we stop the work. But this is what they're about. This is their personality. It's. You know, you've got to have all the information. It's, de it's, it's detail, it's data. They like accuracy. They like data, they like procedure. So you need to tell them what you're gonna do, what the problem is, what you're gonna do, and what the possible outcomes are, because that's what they need. It's not what they like, that's what they need, okay? And they're motivated by quality answers and excellence. That's what motivates them. Their environmental, their environmental needs are clearly defined goals. So you need to work out a plan for them this is what we're going to do now. In two weeks' time, we're going to come back. We're going to do this and that. OK, they need a plan. They need a plan. You've got to give them a plan. OK, their communication style is logical, precise and detailed. Their blind spots are other people's feelings. They have no idea that they've upset you. OK, they're real perfectionists. OK, so be, be aware of their blind spots. It's not about you. They're not being rude to you. That's just who they are. OK, so... Now's the interesting bit. You. You. Okay, so put your name down. What your style is, and that's, I say, this is just for today. This isn't casting rock. That's just what you think you are, what your style is. Okay, what are you motivated by? Okay, a little bit in there. What, what are you motivated by? Okay, what do you think your environmental needs are? What do you think your communication style is? And now that now the tough one, what do you think your one blind spot is that you can work on? OK, I'll give you just a couple minutes of absolute honesty there. I'm going to give you a little bit of honesty, a little bit of time for your honesty there. OK, should have done it by now. Now go back to your list of three clients, put their names in and now fill out the boxes for those clients. OK, I need to do this pretty briskly because time is marching on. OK, we've got to get through this, this talk. OK, so let's just quickly go through that their name, their personality style, what are they motivated by, their environmental needs, what their blind spots in communication might might be, okay? You should have done at least one, perhaps two by now. You should be getting on to the third one, just about finished. Right, good, well done, well done. So, this is just a reminder. You've got top left, dominant Ds, top, sorry, top left, dominant Ds, top right, the Is, bottom right, S is sweet, supportive, Bottom C's, cautious, okay, C's. So if you've put down on your um, own sheet about you, if you put yourself down as a D, okay, if you go to a client and you've assessed them, and, and by assessment, I mean, this is fast, it's just, you know, in, in seconds or minutes, okay. If you've assessed them as a D, that's the top green um, part of that chart there, um, your strengths are you've probably got mutual goals, okay? Your struggles are going to be power struggles, okay? Because you both want to be in charge, okay? The strategy should be don't force the issue. Don't force the issue, okay? This is how to deal with clients if you're a D and they're a D. If you're a D and they're an I, your strengths are you're both fast paced, okay? But you, and, and you may want to follow your, or they may want to follow your leadership. OK, so let's do it. Let's have you make the decisions if you're a D. Your strategies are, sorry, your struggles are um, they may want to focus on fun rather than goals. OK, that's the struggle. They just want to have fun and you want to get it done if you're a D. OK, your strategies are make things fun, but keep them focused. Perhaps have the fun bit at the end rather than at the beginning. OK, keep them focused. Now, if you're a D 
and you're working with a S, a sweet person, your strengths are you like to lead and they like to be led. OK, so that's a strength. OK, the struggles are they may feel as though you're bullying them and they may work at a slower pace. OK, so that's a that's a bit of a struggle there. OK, so your strategy, be patient, talk slower and possibly softer. OK, because that's sweet. They don't want their feathers ruffled. Just keep it calm. OK, when your natural tendency is to just scream and shout. OK, calm it down. If you're working with a C, OK, the cautious, detailed person, your strengths are you're both focused because you're both task orientated. OK, and you can work independently. Your struggles are attention to detail may frustrate you. You're a D. You don't. This is typical of uh, James May and Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy Clarkson is a D, doesn't want details. James May, detailed. OK, and he'll say, just leave me alone with the tools. I'll fix it. OK, that, that's, that's a struggle. The attention to detail may frustrate you if you're a D dealing with a C. OK, your strategies, don't rush them. Just provide them with information and let them do it at their pace. That's if you're a D dealing with those other personalities. Now, as a reminder, OK, that if you're a D, you've got to remember people are important. Don't be overly pushy. Allow people to go at their own pace. And that may not be your pace, but it's their pace. OK, so if you're a D, you need to really, really watch that. OK, now as, as an I, so that's the top right, as an I, if you're dealing with a client who's a D, OK, now the great thing is your strengths are you're both outgoing and you both like to win, OK? The struggles are they may be too controlling and want results more than fun, and you're in it for fun, OK? So if you're an I dealing with a D, you've got to watch that. Your strategies, OK, if you're an I dealing with a D, you've got to speak direct, work first, then have fun, OK? Work first, then have fun. Now, if you're an I dealing with a client who's also an I, the strengths are you're both enthusiastic and fun loving, which is great. OK, your struggles are you may be competing for attention. OK, you may be competing for attention and you may be, can I say this clearly? On it? You may be a bit disorganised. OK, that's the struggle. But the strategy is you've got to listen and you've got to hold each other accountable and decide who does what. OK, that's if you're an I dealing with an I client, okay? If you're an I dealing with a sweet client, an S, okay, your strengths are you like to talk and they like to listen. It's brilliant, okay? So that's great, okay? Your struggles are you may be too fast-paced for them and too high energy, okay? So your strategy should be to slow down, praise them, and don't embarrass them. Don't embarrass them, okay? So that's if you're an I dealing with a S sweet person. OK, if you're an I dealing with a C, you know, a, a, a competent, careful person, your strengths are opposite strengths provide good balance. And, and this, if I, I'm just going off a tangent here. This is really interesting. When you find out who you are on that circle of things, if you look diagonally opposite, that's possibly who you're married to. OK. Now, the interesting thing about that is you might go to a party and there's a lady who's a life and soul of the party, very gregarious, outgoing. Her husband is in the corner with a drink, having a great time, really, really quiet. Uh, without her, he wouldn't have any fun. And without him, she wouldn't even know the date of the party. And likewise, if you've got a D and an S, the D person is the leader. OK, so without the D, the S person may not much, make much progress in life. But without the S person, that D, they may not have any friends. OK, so this opposites do do attract and it balances out quite nicely. And if you've got a working situation, OK, it's very important to, to look for those balances. OK, so this I'm, I'm getting off the track here. So this is an I now looking at a C. Opposite strengths provide good balance. We're looking at the, the bottom part here now. OK, the struggles are miscommunication. OK, that's a big, big thing. OK, miscommunication. The strategies are be more factual. So if you're naturally an I and you've got a client who wants details, you've got to be more factual. You've got to raise that part of your personality to be more factual and perhaps suppress the fun bit because they're not interested in fun. They just want the details, the data, the information. OK. OK. And you've got to be calm. They, they, 
they just won't get the fact that you're emotional. Okay, so you've got to calm it down a bit. <coughs> right, let's move on. If you're not, remember, listening is important. Tasks must be completed. Stay focused. Okay, stay. I know it's difficult for an eye. Okay, we we have challenges with staying focused, but trust me, sometimes we, we just have to. Okay, so I feel your pain. Now, if you're an S, okay, sweet supportive. If your client is a D, the strengths are you're a good supporter. Let them lead. Okay, so you're going to a yard and they say, right, I want that one and that one and that one shot. What's there to talk about? Just they just to do it. They've already told you what it is that they want. There's there's no argument. Just just give them the lead. Okay. The struggles is they can exhaust you because you'll get halfway through doing one. They say, well, I'm just about to ride this. Can you start on, on on that horse there? And and when they say can you, it means you're going to. Okay. It's, it wasn't a question. They were just being polite as they can be, and and so you're gonna get stressed because they're gonna change their mind and they can exhaust you. Okay. The strategies. Don't take it personally. It's not about you, okay? Be firm and direct, and you can say, well, I just need to finish this because I'm halfway through, and I really need to finish what I'm doing. I'm going to be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and, and then it's all yours. So you put them back in charge. Then it's all yours, okay? So if you're an S dealing with an I, okay, the strengths are you tend to get along well because you're both people orientated, okay? The struggles are, they are very fast paced. They have large social cir circles and, that, and you might find that daunting. OK, so that's an S dealing with an I. OK, the strategies, <laughs> this can be really, really tough for you S's now. You've got to raise your energy level. OK, uh, don't be talked into things, but you've got to raise your energy level if you're dealing with an I. Because otherwise, it, you know, you're going to be bamboozled. Uh, they just bore you. OK, now if you're an S, Dealing with an S, so if you're a sweet supportive person and your client is also a sweet supportive person, personality, okay, the strengths are both of you will enjoy a nice relaxed atmosphere, okay. The struggles are you may be skirting around difficult issues because you're trying to avoid conflict, okay. And that's really tricky if you're an S, dealing with an S, you may be just not looking at the elephant in the room, okay. Now your strategies this is difficult for us, is you've got to take the initiative, okay? You've got to be honest about issues and feelings and just say it as it is, okay? I know that's tough for you, S's. I feel for you, but, you know, that is a strategy. Now, if you're an S, a sweet person, dealing with a C, okay, your strengths is you're both slower paced, you're both reserved, okay? Neither of you are pushy and you tend to get on well. Your struggles are that you find their impersonal, logical approach difficult. Because you're a people person and they're a task, okay, you find that just them asking you for data and facts, it's not very people-y and you're a people-y sort of person, you're supportive, okay. So your strategy is, is to interact with them on a detail-only terms. Don't take it personally, but when you're dealing with them, if you've got a client that's a C and you're an S, all they want is facts and data, and that's all you stick to. Just stick to that, it'll be fine, okay? So remember, it's okay to say no, don't be bullied. Trust your own judgment. This, this is, if you're an S, sweet supportive, trust your own judgment, be more confident, okay? Be more confident, okay? Now, if you're a C, okay, which is the bottom left, task, reserved person, okay? Competent, careful. If you're a C and you're dealing with that D person, your strengths are, you know what, you're going to be a very effective team if you share the same goals, okay? Because they're going to be the driving force and you're going to have the backup with all the details. That's a great team, okay? The struggles are, <laughs> they're going to want it done fast, <laughs> okay? And, and, and you want to get it done right. So they want it done and you want to do it right. And that can be a real struggle. So your strategy, okay, accept their perspective and don't argue every point. OK, just stick to your details, be calm, it'll be fine. OK, trust me. So if you're a C, dealing with an I, OK, your strength is that their sense of fun can be a good balance with your sense of discipline. So it can work quite nicely. Your struggles are they will thrive on praise, not criticism. And if you just talk to them in facts and data 
point out where they're going wrong, it's going to kill the relationship, okay? So they, they thrive on praise, not criticism. Your standards may be too high for them, okay? You're very, very careful, very conscientious. Your standards may be too high for them. So if you're a C and your client is an I, you know, you're going to have to watch that. Your strategies is uh, they will never have your attention to detail. So that's your that's a strategy to adopt. So you don't push for, for perfection. OK, so don't push for perfection. That's a strategy. If you're a C, dealing with an I. Now, if you're a C, dealing with an S. OK, so you're a C, detailed, dealing with an S who's supportive. Your strengths are you're both low key relationships and you're free from conflict. OK, your struggles are. They may not share your enthusiasm for, the, for, for details. OK, so that could be a struggle. Your strategy is don't criticise them and respect their feelings. And the, the, the S's will love that. If you respect their feelings, OK, the S's will really, really like that. OK, now if you're a C, dealing with a C, so you're now, you know, you're a C and your client is a C. Your strengths are you both work hard on projects and you have factual conversation, factual conversation. Your struggles is, or struggles are rather, is, your struggles are, you both think you're right. Okay, now when you both think you're right, you can actually then both shut down. Okay, and that can happen. Okay, so what's the strategy for that? Is, how about this as an idea, try it their way. They actually may be right, okay? So if you both fear criticism of your work, OK, try it their way, because it, it, it's it's you will shut down. OK, if you're detailed and they're detailed and some of that can happen with with vets and farriers. You get a farrier who's very detailed and a vet who's very detailed. The vet will hold an opinion and the farrier will it may not be the same opinion. And so what happens is there's a complete shutdown, a breakdown of communication because you want to defend your corner. You know what? Sometimes, hey, try it their way. Try it their way. You, you never know. OK, you never know. And the same can happen with nurses and doctors, I expect. OK, so remember, if you're a C, people are important. Remember, no one's perfect. I'm close. I'm close. OK, I can walk on water, but it has to be frozen. OK, so don't overanalyze everything. OK, now refer back to your three clients. So client number one. OK, you just, just work through this. What's the strength of your relationship? What are the struggles that you're having? OK, and what are your strategies? And do that for one, two and three. OK, so that's your first three clients. Oh, sorry, the, the, the three clients, not, not the fourth one, the, the three that you put down. OK, what's your strength of your relationship? What's the um, struggles that you're having? And what's going to be your strategy now? OK, just do that for one, two and three. We'll give you just a couple of moments to fill that in. Meanwhile, I'll sing you a song. As, that should inspire you to uh, write faster. OK, now, once you've done those, now go back to that client that you were having real difficulty with. OK, what's the strength of your relationship? What's going to be the or what is the struggle with it? So now it's what's going to be your strategy? Because there's no use doing this sitting in on this lecture unless you come up with some sort of strategy. So what's going to be your strategy now? OK, great. Well, that's it, guys. Congratulations. OK, so the highlights, remember. You can't be aware of something until you're first aware of something. Clients are going to have their own built uh, uh, perspective on life. It may not be yours. It's theirs. So when they act the way they do, it's generally not about you. That's just who they are. OK, and that's not good or bad or indifferent. That's just who they are. We're all different. OK, so we need to learn to um, uh, adapt our behaviour to better meet the needs of our clients. And, it, and it's coming back to that. If you and I were going to play uh, football, I need to know how you like to receive the ball or the information or the communication in order that I can pass it to you so we can then, you know, play a game and have some good communication. OK, so this disc system it, it's just a tool to uh, build bridges for communication. But and this is a big but now you've got to have a sincere and genuine desire uh, to connect with someone because that's the key to using this information correctly. It's no use thinking, oh, this will make my work easier. You've got to have a sincere desire to interact with somebody and to understand them for this to be of any use. OK, 
And that, what I would recommend you do is don't um, start putting into action. Just tomorrow, when you start your work tomorrow, just just take a moment and just look at people that are, are around you. Whether you're going into a, a shop, a business, or you know a yard to shoe some horses, or work with somebody you're in a different team, just sit back and just say, are these people more outgoing or reserved? Are they more task orientated or people orientated? And then what am I and how can I adopt or adapt how I would generally interact with them to get better communication? OK, and, and ju just do it as a practice tomorrow. OK, so you can't control anyone else. And that's what been said, but you can control yourself. OK, so above all else, remember, you know, Dr. Robert Rum's rule for personality styles is that one, uh, the, the person that knows this information is the one responsible for using it. In other words, you can't expect somebody else who doesn't know this information to use it. Okay, so since you now know it, okay, the ball's in your court. What a challenge! The ball's in your court. Okay, so I recommend you get onto I, I know Amazon and uh, get yourself a, a, a copy of this book, uh, Positive Personality Profiles by Dr. Bob Barone. It describes all of this. I'm just sharing um, some of my experiences that I've put into practice uh, since uh, seeing him lecture some, some years ago now, actually, uh, about 20 years ago. And um, it, it just works. It's fast. It's simple. You can incorporate it into your daily work. It's, 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 it's fun to do. It's fun to do. And it diffuses situation because you're more forgiving of people's personalities. OK. And lastly, I hope you found it useful and fun. And that's it. We're going to take a five minute break now. I'm going to uh, have some uh, coffee and some water or something. And um, we're going to look through the comments and we're going to come back. So what's going to happen now is going to go onto a holding page with some fabulous um, uh, uh, what's that? elevator music <laughs> okay, to listen to. But we're going to give you five minutes. Give us five minutes. We'll be right back and then we'll be working through your uh, comments. OK, so we'll see you in five. Bye-bye now.
Okay, so welcome back. Welcome back. Um, we've had five minutes here for me to get a sip of water and to get down some of the comments. And what I've done, I've got the comments that were, they may have not been all phrased the same way, but the theme was pretty much the same. So we've got three main themes coming through from, from all the comments. Okay, um, number one was, sometimes I feel I'm like a D, sometimes I feel like I or S or, or, or C. Um, how do I find out which I am? Because I feel that I'm like all of these. Now, if you're a person, and um, we, we, we've done this in a big auditorium where we've had hands, a show of hands, so people that say, um, you know, I go through the personality styles, and I say, so those people that think they're a D, can you just raise your hand and that go like that, straight up. And I say, okay, if you're an I, can you put your hand up? And, they, they, and they're like, this. they're looking around to see who else is there. I'm at you for coffee, I'll call you. That's how the eyes are. The S's will put their hand up and they're like this, as a, please, please don't ask me a question, please don't. And then the C's, the detail people, are like, oh, that could be me, but then I'm sometimes like this, but I'm a bit like that as well. And I'm Oh, and, not, and because they're doing that, they're calculating. So I'd say, somebody that's doing this, I'm a bit like this and sometimes I'm like that, I'd say, you're probably a C, okay? Just for today, not casting rock, but if you're going like this, sometimes a C, I'm a bit, okay, you're calculating. So for all those people that say, why do I feel that I'm like this? It can also be that um, those people that say, well, I'm, I'm definitely um, a C or I'm definitely a D, whatever, so I'm, I know I'm, I'm mainly that, but I'm also, if I'm a D, I'm also sometimes a bit like an I, and I can sometimes get a bit detailed, okay? I say, those are your two sort of lesser traits. Your main trait is like a D, but your lesser traits will be I and C, and diagonally opposite, that S person, that, that is who you're married to, okay? <laughs> or dating or whatever. So that's that. Um, so uh, how, oh gosh, uh, how do, how do you interact with it? Um, so how do you interact with an I and D in conversation? Hey, I've I, I got something to write all these down for me. I think. So I might have to come back to that one. Um, so uh, one of the ones was um, if people are difficult, how, how, do, you, how do you spot a, a difficult person? You know, somebody's just difficult to get on with, you know, they're, 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 and, they're, and they're just difficult. Okay. But I suppose, first of all, I've got to think, is it me that's difficult? Is, 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 is this a me problem or a you problem or something? Okay. What don't I understand about your personality or, or your life? Okay. That would make me better uh, uh, understanding you. Okay. So some people can be difficult to deal with for no other reason. They're just difficult to deal with. And there may be something else going on in their life that they haven't alluded to. They may be keeping it a secret, whatever, but it exhibits as just being difficult because they've just got so much on their mind, okay? So, you know, cut people some slack, but you can generally see where they're generally coming from. I know it's general all the time, but just have a look at them and say, come back to the basics. Would they be, uh, would you say they're more outgoing or reserved or task or, or people orientated? I say, so when you come back to those four quadrants, then you can start to sort of, at least communicate with them in a way that they would find acceptable. And, and once, once you've established that, and remember that a lot of farriers and vets, we're looking to establish a basis for good communication that may last 20, 30, 40 years, okay? And it's a bit like doing your shirt up in the morning. Unless you've got all those buttons done up right, it's, and you've got them done up wrong, your shirt's still on, but it's just gonna feel a bit uncomfortable. And, you know, if you're trying to establish a good client uh, or a good client base, you've got to get all those buttons done up right so it's going to be comfortable for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. OK, so make sure you've got the communication right to start with and you understand where they're coming from and what type of personality they are so you can communicate um, effectively with them. And you might have to adopt a different way of talking with them. You may have to suppress part of your personality. To, to deal with them, and you may have to raise other parts of your personality, your personality to uh, deal with them. Okay, um, so I, I think that's what that was. Um, so how how do you do deal with different people? Um, it's and I suppose with that, it's 
um, will I lose myself if I have to adopt my personality to all of theirs? Will I lose my identity? Will I forget who, who I am in all this? And it's like, no, <laughs> you know, you're still you. It's just that you've developed some strategies and some systems that make communication easier and it makes your day actually less stressful and a lot more fun because now you're getting through the work instead of battling with the, with the conversation and you're battling with the communication, you're now, it's just easier and you find you just get through your work quicker because you can uh, talk to people in a way that you can get what you want. You know, you want to arrive at the yard, get the horse out, work through there, um, do all the paperwork and be on your way. And you can do that more effectively if you can get people to work with you rather than just ordering them around. Well, you can order them around if they're an S, but you know, it won't work if they're a D. Okay, so by understanding where they're coming from, you can have a very, very productive day and it reduces the stress. Okay, and um, the stress load on, on farriers uh, and vets is very, very high. So we're looking to reduce that. And I do have another lecture that I'll be, I'm, I might as well promote it now. It's called Stress and Time Management. And we'll be doing that at some point in the future, we've delivered it a few times uh, to different groups across the world, and we're going to be doing that again. So look out for that one. It's the stress and time management. That's a great lecture. Okay. And with that, we're going to love you and leave you. We hope this was fun, uh, informative. Uh, for, for those of you that want to contact me, I'm going to leave this uh, this particular screen up here. It's got my contact de details on there. Um, that's my mobile number and my email. Okay. So uh, we love you and leave you. Have a great evening. Bye bye.